A very good morning. Thank you so much for staying with us. You are still watching The Morning Breeze and I do welcome you to our segment of The Breakfast Meeting. My name is Doreen Komhanch and this morning we'll be looking at the brief on uh, the ongoing infrastructure, uh, you know, works. Now, when we talk about, you know, works and transport, we are looking at a docket that continues to take, you know, uh, you know the biggest uh, chunk of uh, the budget, you know, in the country today, year in, year out. And the question is, you know, where does the money go? What are some of the works that government as for you the public you know you and i you know how much do we know about you know the manner in which you know some of these monies are actually uh you know spent on what uh, projects you know on what roads are we talking about if it is if it is railway you know how much do we know what is the update you know how much has actually it's taxpayers money at the end of the day it, it is your money it is my money so do we even know what exactly happens do we even you know have the interest, you know, in getting to know how exactly government is going about some of these infrastructure projects. So, uh, as we do speak, there is a multi-stakeholder working, you know, infrastructure trust that is aimed at improving citizens' lives through enhancing, you know, disclosure, validation, and interpretation of infrastructure data. Now, interpretation is key because oftentimes when it comes to these works, you know, updates and reports, the language used is, you know, somewhat... Uh, strange uh, to the public that even if you called for accountability that the world would actually get confused a person like me so you end up not understanding uh, but accepting because you simply cannot ask and you do not ask simply because you don't know what to ask and we don't know what to ask simply because we do not understand what we are asking so cost is here to break it down for us cost is here to break it down for the public uh, but to say more about projects that are going on in the country is mr enoch um niba Ampamia. Nimpamia. All right. That's Mr. Enoch Nimpamia and uh, he, you know, from out stakeholder group vice chairperson Coast and Mr. Nathan Bianima also from, you know, Coast. Uh, good morning, Nathan. How are you? Good morning. It morning. is a, pre a pleasure having you with us. Good morning. Yes. Today. Coast. Yeah. What does it stand for? Anyway? What, what, what exactly is Coast? Uh, Coast is um, a married stakeholder working group. Mm. It stands for Construction Sector Transparency Initiative. Um, uh, Cost. Okay. Uh, it is headquartered in United Kingdom, mm -hmm. uh, but of course, different countries which subscribe to the ideas of uh, cost are prior to join. Mm -hmm. So, cost currently has over uh, are 26 countries of the world. Uganda is one of them. Um, Uganda joined in 2013 mm -hmm. after the application of UNRWA, UNRWA Pride uh, to Coast International that Uganda should be a member of, uh, of, uh, of Coast. Mm -hmm. So that's how Uganda chapter uh, becomes, uh, has its own Coast. Mm. Um, coast is, uh, uh, it, compri it, is a, it is arranged on a tripartite arrangement uh, one, we have the private sector, mm -hmm. we have the government, and we have the civil society. Okay. So for the case of Uganda, um, we have representatives, called the uh, office of the prime minister, mm -hmm. we have assistant commissioner that represents uh, that office to cost Uganda. Mm -hmm. We have the director of the Directorate of Ethics and Integrity. We have human rights there for mm. the board. Mm. Then we have Ministry of Works, represented as Honorable Monica Azuba mm -hmm. Tege, mm. as the cost champion. Mm. So we have that government support. Then for the civil society, we have the uh, Action Coalition on Climate Change. We have the Africa Freedom for Information Center mm. and the Uganda Road Support Sector Initiative. Then sector, we have the Uganda Bus Operators Association. We have the Association of Engineers. So that is the composition of cost. Hmm. You may ask, why cost? What is it for? Uh, the primary purpose of cost is to ensure value for money mm -hmm. in public. So it is not limited to, say, a road, mm -hmm. railway, bridge. We cover schools, hospitals, wherever there is uh, construction. Mm. Premised on the understanding that oftentimes, the government allocates huge sums of money to the construction sector. Mm. So unless that kind of oversight function, 
uh, to augment or supplement the government's uh, uh, effort mm. in trying to provide better quality works, then we risk missing the point. Having said that, our mission is to promote uh, uh, transparency and accountability in the public construction. Our feeling is that better roads, better lives. Okay. So having said that, how do we work? What is it, the scope of our work? Hmm. We promote the disclosure of information. And this should be voluntary because nobody is forced. But we, <coughs> not my, we have access to information. Act. The disclosure of information on whose part? Government in this case? Yeah, government. Those are the procuring entities. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, the um, government departments, the government agencies. So they should be disclosing this information to the public. So we have that component of the disclosure but it's of information. It is of the uh, Access to Information Act. Yeah. It mandates you to provide information to the public. So which is which? Of th there is that information which should go to the public domain. There are also those clauses uh, of confidentiality that you cannot. You can, you yeah. But mm. this other information, like the code, the contractor, information like uh, the name of information, like uh, the amount of funds that are allocated to um, uh, to the project. Uh, information like the design of the road, mm. uh, information like the road completion, all that information is public information and ideally this information should be provided to the public. Because if you are constructing a road in the public, then why do you hide this information? The moment you attempt to hide this information from the public, then you create grounds for suspicion and later on mistrust. Right. So as cost we say, if we can uh, be open mm. to each other, then provide this information, uh, it becomes important. The other component was, uh, under assurance is that if you provide this information, mm. we have uh, assurance professionals as cost. It is a standard, it is a canon, a cross board. Mm. So assurance professionals constitutes of the engineers. These are technical people. So provide information to us. We give it to the assurance professionals. We also conduct some of the assurance studies because we've done on some uh, specific roads and some bridges like uh, uh, when you're crossing Ginger mm. and wait more. So they look at this information, validate this information. We call you to ensure that this information that is captured is palatable to you, is acceptable to you. Otherwise, we are not an inquiry. We are not a public prosecution. We are supposed to supplement on your work. We are supposed to work with you as, um, uh, as our partner. Then the other component, I told you of assurance, called engagement. Mm -hmm. We bring the private sector, we bring the government, and we bring the civil society uh, on board. All right, now from 2013, uh, I'm, I'm, as, you know, actually as uh, Enoch was breaking this down for me, I was trying to think of all the projects that the country has actually undergone from 2013 until today. Uh, one, he mentioned like, be a member. Uh, what happens to other countries that have not applied but also ought to be held accountable? No, it's really, I'm happy he has been able to say it. Mm. And you also said it mm. that uh, most governments, of course, are spending a gross amount of money yes. in infrastructure. Yes. So here it is, we are adding in. We are saying, look, these projects are meant for our people, mm -hmm. our citizens. Mm. And it's high time that we made this infrastructure or whatever project known to our people who want to engage our citizens. They are the end users of the projects. You and me, we are not informed. Mm. We are in the dark. Mm. We don't know, uh, like you have seen the massacre road, church people coming in on the, because of the accidents. Mm. Now some of them even know the terms of engineers. Mm. They, you, have, you see? So it is an initiative really on a new that we should add value to infrastructure. Having spent so much money, why don't we let our people know about it? If the, the, the road is from, from, from Masaka to Mbarara, hmm. or from Sorotu to Lira, it is a certain number of kilometers. Hmm. There should be a signboard around this project. Is the road for this number of kilometers. Hmm. The, the contractor is so and so. The amount involved is this. The duration is this. Then you can mention briefly the 
the scope of work. Did you get down to, you know, how the contractors, you know, were actually got into in the issue of, you know, how do you do these contracts? What's the criteria? Exactly. Yeah. So cost mm. gets involved mm. right from the initial stages up to the end of the project cycle. We would want our people to be informed. Mm -hmm. We would want to know if you are making a road, how come when you reach here, you did this? And you see how many people put it, the engineering words. The you know technical the other language. We would want to simplify it mm. and make sure that our people get to know that Uganda government is doing this bridge at Jinja. It's the number of meters and the amount is involved. So, so what questions do you get the public to ask? Because now we are having a bit of a like a challenge mm. on part of government. Mm. Government endorsed it, embraced it, but we would want to make it like a policy. Government should make it a policy mm. because this is an initiative. <laughs> on, a neutral, on a neutral ground, we are saying that each project that is being done mm -hmm. be disclosed. But at the end of the day, we have, we have, we are, what are we looking for? Value for money. Mm. And let people know. For example, this business of compensation you have seen, it's a problem to this country. Mm. But people see the project landing. Yet, if people you brought, like uh, Jennifer Musi in Kampar, mm. she has gone to Rubaga. In this Kampara region, to have many compensation. But if I put like this road, mm. your business will definitely have, will not have dust, you know, this and that. People have accepted willingly. Even people in Makindi, on the new municipality, this Sabaga Makindi this right. municipality, people, it's because we have been in, people have been in the dark. And we are, we are coming in with the government to embrace this one wholeheartedly. Mm. As he said, we are not prostitutes, we are not investigators, but we are saying, look, Enough is enough. I was actually going to, to, yeah. to get down to that whole point of mm. you know, government embracing this mm. because when we talk about accountability, when we talk about transparency, we all know about corrupt, you know, huge chunks of money to, to corruption, you know, in the various infrastructure projects, you know, we expect our road to get done, you know, in a certain period of time. We don't know how the contracts are issued. Uh, you know, the, it's a briefcase kind of, you know, uh, situation. Now, when we have cost getting on board, you're stepping into someone's shady business for this. Yes, but uh, Doreen, yeah. as I rightly put it, mm. one, it was in September 2013 mm. that UNRWA, having uh, gotten the, expo uh, the exposure mm -hmm. on how other countries that have embraced cost are achieving in terms of the construction works, they felt that this initiative is important for Uganda. Mm -hmm. For example, if you go to Ethiopia, you look at a highway called Bishop uh, Adama Highway, highway. Huh? from Addis Ababa up to Bishop to mm. or WZ. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is amazing. Even more better than the ones you see in Cape Town or South, South mm -hmm. Africa. Mm -hmm. So, having seen this initiative that it works in other countries, Malawi has embraced this. Mm. Guatemala has embraced Tanzania. this. The yeah, United Kingdom, which is one of the biggest funders to this government of Uganda, mm. has embraced it. Mm. Tanzania and others, the countries that they told. Mm -hmm. So now it is up to these pro, uh, procuring entities to embrace cost. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, what are those things that you can do and help you? One, can you construct a road at the lowest minimum cost? Yes. Can you construct minimum cost by not compromising the, the, the cost, cost of work? Go down to this? Yes, yes, yes. we go down yeah, to this. Because there's also an issue of the exorbitant No, no, pricing. we go down to this. Yeah. And this is why I told you we have technical team. Mm. Those are assurance professionals. Assurance professionals, these are the engineers who have studied this from abroad. Say the UK. How much from powers US. does cost have to influence, you know, uh, the minds uh, of the decision makers in this Yeah, case? why it, it has the powers to influence is that, first of all, the government is part of cost. As I said, we have the government, mm. we have the private sector, then we have the civil society. So the government itself is committed to that the Minister of Works, um, Honorable ha Monica. Yes, herself, yeah. is a champion of cost. She sees that there is a lot of future in embracing cost. Mm. She sees that shoddy works will cease. She sees clearly that Uganda can construct roads that can last in the cognizance of the fact that uh, the loss of lives that we've been witnessing because of the poor road designs, uh, because of the shoddy works, can end once we embrace such kind of initiative. Mm. So really, 
it becomes paramount and important for the government and all procuring entities to embrace this. And us, has agreed to join COST as an observer. We've engaged them. KCCA has been partnering with COST um, and quite many other procuring entities. All right, now, uh, Honorable Nathan, mm -hmm. I I'd love to, to, to get your opinion. You know, mm -hmm. from 2013, I, I must admit that we've had several projects going on. You know, we mm -hmm. have the way that the flyover. You know, we have uh, the Nile Bridge that you just talked about and several other, you know, constructions going on in the country. But all these constructions, all these works, you know, have one thing, one thing in common. They all depend on borrowed money. Yeah. What has been your observation? How are we handling the money? How are we handling this project so far? No, I really don't blame any, any part really, really. Mm. Our part, as, you, as I said, we started, it started in 2013 yeah. by UNRWA. Mm. But unfortunately, UNRWA along the way, had some problem of this Katosi road. Yes. Uh, so there mm -hmm. was restructuring within, and that yeah. was our home as cost. Mm -hmm. So you know, let's move ahead, despite the problem that they have had, and it's one, that's one of them. Because, for example, what we are saying, my dear daughter, is why do we have to spend too much money on the roads, mm. and yet we don't get the value? for Some it. Money, yeah. Yet, if people continue saying, engineers are thieves, mm. are corrupt. No. The roads we have at times here in Uganda don't, are not the same as the ones we have abroad. Mm -hmm. The scope of work involved. It. That's why we feel that to avoid all those, you know, suspicion and what have you, let's be as transparent as possible. But, but for the public, you know, for the as, public as you're engaging, know. you know, all these... For the Makere, as you go to Makere mm. one day, mm. Up to Nakurabia now, and even Bakuri, people don't know what is being done. Including but imagine, myself, but yeah, exactly. But imagine <laughs> if there was a baraza or a meeting, mm. and you call people and you say, "Here we are, city council. We have had the funding from the World Bank. Mm. We are going to make this road a dual carriage." People don't. Really uh -huh. At some point, you don't know how. Absolutely. The so we would want the on. people to yeah. be know that this road is going to be done. In two years, but honorable, do, and you know, do these people want to know? Because they want. I'll be, I'll be but very nobody, honest with you. Oftentimes, people. people will say one thing, honorable. Mm. I can't wait to use this road when it's ready, uh. or I can't wait to use the Entebbe Expressway. You know? It's because th that element we are coming in to address. Yeah. Of the why don't you make this issue public? public. Involve the end users. So, our people. what question should the public ask? Because you know, there's, uh, there's, we, sometimes we, we are, are, we are asking say, the we wrong saying, questions. Yeah. For example, yeah. even the Jennifer mm. the ED of KCC, mm. even the department would be relieved if they had barazas, they come here as we have come Do here. Do they want to engage the public? No, that's something I think they want. I don't think I can't blame them now because we are, we are trying them now. We are approaching all of them. Okay. Mm. We are saying, come out where we have been. This is the right direction. Can cost force these stakeholders? No. The moment you mention the word force. Okay. Compel. As <laughs> compare. No. Yes, yes compare. comparing. Yes, <laughs> we can compare. Yes. Uh, them to uh, provide this information. Mm. You earlier on asked an interesting question. Uh, what question should the public ask? A. Why is it that other countries? B. We've been having uh, big. Uh, uh, amounts big in terms budgets? of allocation, yes. big budget. Yes. Um, compared to other sectors, yet the road sector is not improving. We spend more on roads, have uh -huh. poor quality roads right. compared mm. to, the, to other countries See, that spend less on these roads. Why yeah. is it that the Uganda, the, or the country with the highest road carnage, mm -hmm. we may be second in Africa? Mm. Those are the questions. Three or four. Why is it that despite the different uh, agencies that play oversight function mm. in the country, these issues related to the public construction works, then why is it that key issues, say, on a given pro uh, pro uh, project mm. are hidden from the public? What will it cost you if you put, like, a signpost? You indicate the project uh, name, mm -hmm. the amount allocated for that project, duration, period, the contractor, mm -hmm. the consultant, that should be something that is easy, mm. because at the end of the day, wh whose road uh, you are constructing that road on whose behalf? It is on our behalf. Yes. And therefore, we have a right, we have the mandate to request for this information. So these are the questions really the public should be asking. All right. Okay.
right after to actually now discuss the real projects that are you know going on in the country and of course we will be able to get an update from coast mm -hmm. so the whole issue you know we are starting with transparency on this very show mm -hmm. as we do speak but is cost doing this free of charge yes uh, to begin with yes the modest funding to enable people move from for example one place to another mm -hmm. having given some moderate workshops to engage the proletariat against this these are like Minister of Education, mm. Minister of Health, who are involved in the Minister of Water. So at the end of the day, we disseminate our good information that we have. Mm. Please, let's work together. We want to compare notes. We want to compliment you. Because we have, Uganda, Uganda government has brought a lot of money to make roads, yes. to make schools, mm. to make even health centers. By the way, remember that while today, if you have a, a kid today, and you can't you will go to private school mm. and you, you will get the same services. Mm -hmm. If I can't get treatment for my old mother in Marago, mm. I will get to a private hospital. hospital. Yeah. But how about the road? Mm. It's a mandate of government. I don't want anybody really in Uganda. I want people to be aware that we're not spending too much money on the road for the sake of the roads. It's a privilege of having a private person going into the road sector. Yeah. But we are trying it. They set priorities among priorities. Mm -hmm. If you ask people, for example, here in Kampara, why, what road should we do? People would tell you, because they are tired of the traffic jams. You have seen this, uh, if people were consulted, mm. possibly the design would have even been, been even different. Mm. You know it. Mm. So what we want is, from what, where we are coming from, people don't want to divide that information to, to, to us to begin with, mm. but we want to convince everybody. But, but for and this, for government, yeah. really to know that, there must be a policy to enforce that the project must be very free. Finally, uh, you know, uh, how much consultation are the stakeholders supposed to do? Because I'm looking at the bureaucracies and, you know, uh, the duration. No, we are in. We have volunteers, good volunteers. We have a good team. And everybody we talk to is willing, even like you, on Masaka, on Masaka Chotera Road. Mm. It's being done. It's mm. going to be done. Mm. Let us have a meeting with these people you will see that our people are very, 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 very willing They're to participate. They're willing to talk. All hmm? right. All right. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, we yeah. are going to continue with this very discussion right after the break. But in studio, I've had uh, Enoch. How can I get a I'm struggling to, <laughs> <laughs> to pronounce this name. And mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Enoch. It's been a pleasure. Thank it's you, It's really, really. And of course, I'm looking you you know, you. forward to more information. There's a time, I think it was Honor Bosem Junganda, who talked about the fact that the roads we were using as, you know, 10 million Ugandans are the same roads we are using as. So, so yes, yeah, it is a very huge challenge. And I think I'm actually that. glad Costa has actually come in and maybe people will be consulted. Yes. And so our opinions will be considered. Thank you so much for watching. We now take a very short break. But after the break, we'll be coming back with Cost, but this time focusing on the ongoing infrastructure projects, giving an update, and of course having some of your questions.